This is the Double Unbreakable Iron Farm, and this tutorial will show you how to build it. Unlike other farms, this will not require any harder to accomplish village stacking, will get you two times the iron as normal iron farms do, and have two villager trading halls included to get you unlimited emeralds and easy access to other trades that you want. All of the drops from the top of the farm easily move down to the bottom of the farm, so you only need one storage system for everything without the use of any redstone. The materials I used for this farm and a world download can be found in the description below. Also, stick around until the end for some final tips that will help you make and maintain your farm going forward. So for this tutorial, I loaded up a fresh survival world just to show you that you can app that looks really cool. Just to show you that you can make this thing absolutely anywhere in your world. It doesn't really matter where with a couple of very small exceptions. And those main exceptions are this. First of all, do not build this anywhere else where you have like villager technology already at work. Things like uh, crop farms or villager breeders and things of that nature. Keep it away from those. It's, it's not going to work out well for you, I promise you. Number two, you probably don't want to make it close to any type of generated Minecraft village. You can maybe get away with it if you take out all the beds and all the profession blocks, but even then you may come across some complications. So I do advise stay at least 100 blocks away from all of these things. Also, make sure you are 100 plus blocks away from any other beds or profession blocks that are placed down, period. Except for at the very end, I'll show you how to add in the, you know, your own bed and your own profession blocks to use and things like that if you want to. Outside of that, pretty simple. We need a 27 by 27 space for our first farm that'll be located down at the bottom. And then we'll need room 76 blocks above that to make our second farm, our double farm. And like I said, this is gonna be pretty easy. It does not require any like weird, like village farm stacking mechanics or anything like that. It's, this is not a very technical build, but you do wanna make sure you do everything right. Um, we're just gonna pick this random area, I think. I think we're just going to do it like right here. I'm, I'm more than 100 blocks away from that. That doesn't matter. So yeah, let's build it right here. First, you're going to want to mark the different layers that you're going to be working on. The bottom block will be where we have our floor level. Then we will make a ring three blocks above that. Skip a block and then make another ring around the top block. And then we can go through and remove all the middle blocks, except for the one on the bottom that's marking the floor. Next, we want to place our middle four beds circling around the center hole on that lower ring. And then after that, expand that platform out by three blocks in each direction and filling in the entire area with blocks. Here we will be placing 30 beds to go along with 30 villagers that we're going to add in later. And we're going to keep the beds as close to the center of the farm as possible for reasons that I'll explain in just a little bit. If you decide you want more villagers and more beds, you can do that by either continuing to add them along the outside or by creating another layer just below these beds that we're placing right now. Now remember, this is a double iron farm, so you're going to have another 30 plus villagers in the sky above you as well. Just something for you to keep in mind as you're planning out how many villagers and such that you need and how many beds you want on this bottom layer. And once your beds are set, you can then go through and remove the blocks that the beds were placed on as they will no longer be needed. Now, the reason that we laid out the beds this way is because typically your village will center on a bed and it's not always easy to control which bed that is. So we want to keep all of the beds as close to the center of the farm as possible. That way, our spawning platform can be smaller and we can still make sure that we get all spawning spots available um, for our golems to actually be able to spawn on. The way iron golem spawning works is the golem can spawn eight blocks horizontally away from the central center of the village and six blocks vertically away from the center of the village on the highest solid block. So basically what we need to do is we need to measure out how big our platform is going to be. I always recommend anytime you make a farm, give yourself a little bit of wiggle room for any type of potential error, changes to the game, calculations, like anything like that that can occur. So if we can go eight blocks horizontally away from a bed, what we'll do is we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're going to leave that last one there as a marker. This is how far out our spawning platform needs to go. And we can do that on all four sides.
and we measured from the outermost bed on each side that way in case this is the bed that becomes the center well we can have golem spawn all the way out that way is fine but if it's this bed that's the center you know our spot would end up before that platform basically no matter what bed it is we will have every single potential spawning spot taken care of the vertical part isn't going to matter too much we're putting the beds right under the platform that we're going to be spawning on so even though um our golems can technically spawn one two three four five six that high um we're just going to have our, our spawning platform be right here right above the beds the only thing that you really need to make sure that you know is if you're going to put any kind of a roof any kind of covering on top of this farm if it's going to be a solid block so anything that's a solid block not glass not like a bottom slab or something like that any kind of a solid block it's going to need to be higher than six blocks above the beds if it's not your golems are going to spawn up here rather than down there so just make sure you plan that out in that way you're careful to not put a roof to like if you put a roof up here your golems are going to spawn or right here or right there your golems they're going to spawn on that roof you don't want that to happen so we're just going to put our spawning platform here any kind of roof decorative bit will put more than six blocks above the beds before we continue, I want to tell you about the best way you can play Minecraft with others. If you want the best way to play Minecraft with your friends or family, then a Minecraft server from Sparktoast is your answer. A Minecraft server is a great choice as it has much less lag that allows you to see much further in your world than a realm does, while also not requiring you to be online for others to play in it like a locally hosted world on your device does. To get started with Sparktoast, browse through their different tiers of server, ranging from their very affordable budget series that offer better value per dollar than realms or their main lineup of enterprise servers that offer amazing performance at competitive prices once you have your server type amount of ram and any add-ons that you may want selected and purchased your server is ready to play on if you need any help spark toast has amazing customer support through their live chat on their website and on their discord channel sign up today by clicking the link on screen now or in the description below and be sure to use code prowl at checkout to get 20 percent off your initial payment next you need to build your spawning platform Starting from the center ring and counting from the block that's already there, you're going to want to go out eight blocks. From there, go up one block and then go out four more blocks. You're going to want to repeat this on all four sides and then fill in the entire area with blocks like you see on screen right now. Then once you finish the platform, surround it with glass blocks or a solid block with buttons on top so the outer ring is spawn proofed and golems cannot try to spawn on top of it. Now once you get your glass border around, you're going to want to do one more piece here in every corner. Go ahead and throw three little blocks down in an L shape like that and then throw your glass blocks up there in an L shape beside it uh, to keep the water in that we're going to be putting up there in the corners. This is just simply making sure that the water flow that we get set up will flow to the right area and flow as far as we need it to. And at which point now we can go ahead and put the water down. Just put one water in the corner, one water source in the corner, and then go all the way down the side with your water sources. And if you've done it right, this is what you should end up with. Next, if you want to um, kill the cats that spawn in here so you can get string from them, go ahead and pop a campfire in right here. If you don't want to kill the cats, you can just simply put a hopper right here and the cats will just kind of bob around at the bottom and they won't they won't do anything more or less. They'll just kind of sit here in the farm infinitely, which, by the way, let me mention is is 100 percent fine. A lot of people, for some reason, still think that cats spawning will slow your farm down. It, it doesn't. The cats have absolutely zero impact on the farm. Glow squid far, uh, spawning or squid spawning in your farm will have absolutely nothing to do with the speed of iron golem spawning at all. Any Anything you've heard in that regard is 100% a myth. And to collect your drops, you can just go ahead and click a hopper down here. Maybe even uh, do a second one, although face it forward. It'll just help make sure everything will kind of end up in the right spot. And you can grab yourself some chests and set up a little bit of storage something like this should be totally fine although the farm is going to be pretty fast because we're doing a double farm so you may want to end up having more storage than this but for our purposes i'm going to keep the storage really simple now before we go to the next section here i want to explain something else that's really important and that has to do with the beds and the number of villagers the way that iron golem spawning works is for a golem to spawn there has to be a village which if a villager detects a bed there's a village we'll be good there it requires there to be 20 beds 
and 10 villagers. If you have 20 beds and 10 villagers, iron golems will spawn. The speed in which iron golems spawn is always the same 100% of the time. There's nothing you could do to change this. But what you can change is how often a iron golem spawn fails or succeeds. The ways that you change that is to make sure that every possible spawning space is available for golems to spawn, which in our case it is, with the exception of the very center space. That's one block that's missing. That's it. And number two is you need to make sure that your iron golem cap is clear. The iron golem cap is one golem per 10 villagers. That's it. If you have 10 villagers, you can have one iron golem alive at a time. If you have one iron golem that's doing this right here, traveling to the center and eventually getting to the lava system that we put in to kill him in a little bit, um, then while that golem is doing all that, if a second golem tries to spawn in, the spawning attempt fails. So 20 villagers means you can have two golems alive at a time. 30 means three, 40 means four, etc., etc. You can really go as high as you want. But here's the thing. There is like a diminishing return on this. The more golems that you have, there becomes a point where it doesn't make sense to allow for any more. And at some point you get no benefit from it at all. The optimal number here is 30. 30 villagers, three golems at a time. You will have a very rare occasion where a fourth golem would have tried to spawn in, but the attempt fails. So if you wanna really get max rates, you can go ahead and go 40 villagers, but the difference is very small. It's a couple percentage points at best. So. 30 villagers is the optimal amount, but if you want to add in more villagers because you want this thing to be a bigger villager trading hall, then by all means, go ahead and do it. You can add up to, uh, I think I've calculated 82 villagers before things start to get kind of funky with your farm and things can kind of break down. So you keep that in mind, but also we're doing a double farm. So we're not only going to have 30 villagers down here, we're going to have 30 villagers up there as well. I almost forgot one of the most important parts, which is setting up the lava killing system. So we're going to set that up really quick. It's actually really easy. Um, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and click down on where your campfire is to place a sign. Nothing needs to be written on the sign. And we're actually going to place another sign on top of that, just like this. And we're actually going to use signs to hold the lava because you can you can pass right through them. On better condition, signs don't burn or break or anything like that unless you do the breaking. And when we place signs on top of each other, they all stay. You can technically use fence gates, but if you have fire spread turned on in your world, you're going to have to use crimson or warped uh, fence gates because the normal ones, to my knowledge, will burn on you. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the crouch button and we're going to place a sign right here on the side of this one and a sign on the other side of it right there. And we're going to basically be making the floor for our lava. So this is going to be the floor by placing signs all the way on the sides of these signs right here and on the other side. That's the floor for the lava system all the way done. Now what we need to do is we need to make the walls to hold it in. So we went out one and up one. And now we're just going to simply circle around to make a wall of signs to block off our lava. And to test it, all we need to do is place a lava bucket right here in the middle. And you'll see that the lava spreads out. All of the signs stop the lava from coming out. Um, additionally, the signs on the bottom keep the lava from going down. I can now go ahead and remove these temporary blocks I put in to block the water off. Let the water flow into the center. And now golems, as they come in, they will die. Okay, next we need to set our floor for our villager trading area. This is going to be really easy. Go from the center block and go out 11 blocks in each direction and then fill that in. Once your floor is in, come over to your beds and we want to wall these off because we do want to make sure that no villagers can get to them. So we're just going to make a tight wall around the beds here. Just making sure, yeah, that looks good, that we cover all of them up and no villagers can kind of wander into the area. Throw yourself in an iron trap door. That way villagers can't easily get in and out themselves, but you can. And a button to get in. That way they can't open it up. Boom, there we go. Okay, so now we need to set where our villagers are gonna go and we need to set up their profession blocks and we need to wall this whole thing off as well. Now I'm going to recommend that you use profession blocks that are going to both help you get emeralds and are things that you need, but you can use whatever you want. So on the bottom, I 100% recommend that you use something that you can trade iron with. So a weaponsmith, armorsmith, or toolsmith. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down blast furnaces here. Uh, we're going to go out three blocks from the corner. This is the fourth block. Let's, let's go ahead and mark that. And we're going to kind of like block off that little bit here. And now we're going to put a furnace down in every other spot. We do need to leave ourselves a way in and out. So we will skip the spot directly to the left of the doorway and to the right of the doorway, just like that. And then we'll continue to mark off all of the corners like we did before. And really, you could put these in whatever type of order or organization you want. The main thing is you want to make sure you have the same number of these as you have of beds. So I'm, I've created enough space for you here to do 30 of them, just like we did with the uh, beds here. But if you do more or less beds, you can have more or less of these. OK, what we ended up with is eight on all of the sides, except for the side with the doorway, which will have six. Now, lastly, we need to trap in an area behind all the profession blocks here where we're going to actually trap the villagers. So go up by three blocks surrounding all of the profession blocks and your cells should look something like this. And then later on, we're going to close off the top, but we're not going to do that yet. OK, so now if you've gotten as much as I have, you'll have everything kind of boxed in. I didn't really make, necessarily make it look pretty, but I made it look presentable um, for you guys to be able to see. Everything is now boxed in. Everything looks good. All of our stuff is where it needs to be. And now's when you bring in the villagers. If you're wondering how to get villagers here, I have a great video showing you how to move villagers. Go check that out. It is popping up on screen right now. But all you're going to do is need to bring in two villagers. These guys right here. That's it. That's all you need because we're going to let this farm populate itself. So what we're going to do is this guy right here. We're going to give him several stacks of potatoes like so. And then our other guy here, we're going to give him several stacks of potatoes like so. And now all you need to do is wait. If you want to make a villager breeder or bring in more villagers manually, you could do that. That that might speed up the process for you a little bit. But honestly, this right here is a breeder all on its own. So these guys, they're going to go through. They're going to breed. And once you wait here long enough, they will breed up to the number of beds that you have, which in our case is 30. Now, as your villagers breed and grow, you're going to want to make sure you do one thing. Any of these guys, the nitwits, you don't want them in your village because they cannot take a profession. So just make sure to get rid of them. OK, now, while you wait for some of the last ones to go ahead and grow up, you're going to want to start locking these guys into place. You want to get them in their proper area and you want to make sure that they do not unlink from their profession block. Now, I'm seeing a little issue here myself, which is the fact that like multiple of these guys are getting stuck behind the brewing stands. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just take those up. The ones that do get stuck. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to hurt anything. I could break it and I could place it back down. No problem. Whenever you have a guy that's standing on top of his profession block looking down, go ahead and push him. OK, these kids keep following me. It's driving me insane. Go ahead and push him in like that. Close him off like that. Put a water bucket at his feet. That way he will not unlink from this and throw in a trap door above the profession block like this. This will keep the baby villagers from getting in, although I think for here they still might be able to get in, but it's fine. They'll work their way back out. It's not a big deal. Um, and it allows you to block him off. So like if baby zombies or something got in here or maybe a skeleton somehow, like he'd still be safe. He would they wouldn't be able to get him. So, yeah, every single time you see somebody standing on their profession block, looking down at it specifically, that's when you can go ahead and lock them in place like we're doing here. The reason that we use water here is because water will make sure that they do not unlink from their profession block or their bed for any reason. This isn't always 100 percent necessary, but I've found that it still does to this day help. So we're going to do it just to 100 percent make sure that our farm is unbreakable. We want to make sure that nothing happens to make it to where we need to do any sort of maintenance to this farm once every, once everybody is set in place. Now, depending on what type of profession blocks you use, sometimes the villagers don't stand on top of it. They stand in front of it and look at it. When you have that happen, what you want to do is place a row of blocks in front of the profession block like this. And what will happen is they'll get on top of the blocks and then they'll go look down at their profession block like this guy right here. We don't quite know which one he belongs to yet. So we're going to wait. Ah, There we go. See, he walked over and now he's looking down. So now we know we could push him into here and we can take this uh, these blocks out and lock him in place. OK, here we go. All the villagers, they're locked in place now. They're a little twitchy, but they're fine. They will no longer unlink to profession blocks or beds for any reason. This thing is now unbreakable and you could do what you want with these guys. I always like to um, go ahead and trade with them, lock them in, place a sign down to say what it is they have. 
um, with this sort of interior design, you can even like create storage in here by putting chests either down below or even up above if you want to, um, in terms of like storing the things that you trade with them, storing your emeralds and stuff like that. But that part I'll let you guys do with as you wish. I have heard a little bit of chaos happening up here. And yes, we do have golem spawning and we do have cats spawning. You see cats drop into the middle there. If you don't want anything happening to the cats, just go ahead and uh, like I said, don't use the campfire and just leave the hopper down there and that will be perfectly fine. Um, and now we need to move on to the next phase of this, which is we need to create another one of these that'll be slightly different up top. Now I say slightly different because I'm gonna do it in a way that gets these things as close to each other as possible, but if you wanted to, you could literally copy this exact same thing up there. You just have to follow this one simple rule. And that simple rule is we need to go 76 blocks up in the air from where our beds down below us are. The beds are one block below where we are standing. So right now we're standing at Y level 70 minus one would be Y level 69. If we go 76 blocks up from that, we would be at Y level 145. So Y level 145 is the lowest point where we could place our beds. And we do want to keep them pretty close because otherwise you're not going to get golem spawns. I'll explain that in a little bit. To get up there, I recommend just kind of pillar up close to your signs like this. Don't erase your lava source right there. Do something like this and then go up pillar up to the Y level where you need to get to. Okay, once you're up at the proper Y level, you're gonna want to go down about three blocks. I should be able to reach right there. There we go. So we have a two block gap right here. This right here is going to be where we place our beds down. Um, but right here is actually gonna be the new spawning floor. So you may remember just like we did down there where we counted out eight in each direction, up one and then out four. Well, we're gonna do that again. The exact same spawning platform is going to be needed. Now we're going to do the exact same thing that we did down bottom with the beds, except we're just going to do it above the farm. So we left this one block that is two blocks above where we are, that third block. This is where we're going to do that. So just go ahead and surround that center block, just like we did down bottom and start placing your beds down in that circular motion, getting yourself up to 30 beds. Then come down below to do the lava system the exact same way that we did up top. We're going to start with a sign right here instead of this spot, though, because, well, we're going to put something else there. So attach your sign to the sign, put the next sign on top, put the next sign on top of that and make the exact same thing that we did before on the bottom and top it off with some lava and we should be all good to go. Now we can add in our water and get the floor set up above the beds. Actually, before we go up, let's actually go down. I knocked out a block here. Hopefully I can hit this without breaking that. I want to go down maybe a couple blocks here, a few blocks just to have some room to move. And what you're going to do is you're going to place a glass block here, here and here. Here, go ahead and come out one more. Take a fence, an open fence gate, actually, and put it right there. And then if you can, if you can slip in here, like target the back of the block here, place a water source, and then that's going to send down all of our iron, all of our poppies, and it'll actually send the cats down here too, to get us any kind of drops from them as well. Okay, now above the glass here, you're gonna want to use glass blocks. So we use something that is not spawnable. Although if you want to, you could use solid blocks, but you have to put buttons on top of everything to make these spots unspawnable. But we're gonna go right here and we're going to count out 10 blocks in each direction to make a floor. Now what you should have here is a 21 by 21 glass platform. You're now gonna to want to go around it and add a wall that is three blocks high. 
And now you're gonna wanna go ahead and make yourself a total of 30 cells, just like we did down bottom. Now go ahead and get all of your profession blocks in like we did before. This time you may wanna use something like librarians, at least for a lot of these spots, because librarians are going to allow you to trade for books to get enchants for all of your gear. But again, you can use whatever you want here. I just recommend things that you plan on trading regularly use in these spots. You can make them all the same like I'm doing here, or you can make them different. And I did leave a little like carved out area right here where we can put some storage, maybe an anvil and, and things of that nature. And also, just like before, you're going to bring two villagers here, not a nitwit, two villagers here. Give them a moment. They should link up to the beds and the profession blocks. There we go. And start throwing them some food so they can start breeding. And go ahead and get them locked into their little spaces and throw in some water and do that for all 30. Okay, now once all of your villagers are set, you should start getting some golem spawns down below once they have done their working little bit. And keep in mind that you can do discounts with these villagers. I'm not gonna show that here today, but there's three ways to discount villagers that you're gonna want to do. And all three of these stack together. Thing number one is to convert a villager to a zombie and then convert them back to a villager. That will now get a permanent discount. Thing number two is adding a little chamber here in the center where you can convert a villager to a zombie and then convert it back. Every time you do that, all of the villagers in the area will also get a small discount. And the third thing you can do is defeat a raid. Whenever you defeat a raid, that will also give you a hero of the village discount, um, which will give you a total of three discounts that will get your prices pretty low for your villagers. You can now remove this column. You could have done this earlier too, but you can get rid of this column. Um, you're gonna have to set yourself some sort of way to get up and down between here, or you can use an elytra to fly. And here's the big thing is the radius in which you can activate these two farms. It's big, but it's not, it's not enormous, right? If you go all the way down here and get inside of this villager trading area, that farm up there will not work. But if you get about maybe four or five blocks above the floor of your farm, you are close enough to activate the other farm. So what I recommend that you do is pick some space sort of in the middle. Let's say right here. Um, looks like our all of our stuff drops out this way. So I think we should be good to like set ourselves a little platform, something like right here. Maybe we even back it up by one just to make sure we don't have any drops land on top of us. And then just make yourself a little AFK platform. You can make it look like a little house or whatever. Whatever you want it to be, it just needs to be a safe place for you to sit and AFK your farm while the loot gets generated. And as you can see, the golems are spawning here. That golem will die. The stuff he drops will fall into the middle. It'll shoot out the edge here and it will work its way down, landing in here, and then working its way into the system. So a couple final housekeeping notes that you need to know. This is super important. Even though this is the unbreakable iron farm, Mojang still likes to try to find a way to break things. But mostly, the things that will, will quote unquote break, they'll probably happen during your initial setup. So if you're ever finding that golems stop spawning for some reason on either floor or you can't get golems to spawn right in the first place, the basic things that you can do to reset the farm are the following. Number one, the villagers, you can leave them. They're fine. Number two, break all of the beds, break all of the profession blocks. Number three, log off of your world or unload the chunks. Number four, give the game 10 to 20 minutes to properly delete village data from the database. Number five, replace your beds and make sure the villagers are linking to them. Number six, go ahead and get your profession blocks back in place. If you do those things, it should kickstart any farm. Otherwise, make sure you did everything throughout the video right. Your villagers can work. You've placed down the water. Everything's on the right levels, etc., etc. I did mention to you, once you get everything set, you can now add in your own beds and workstations. So once we have all the villagers up there set, all the villagers down here set, if I want a bed in here, I can have one. If I want a bed up there, or maybe I want to have a bed in here, that's fine. No villagers will link to it. It won't mess anything with the farm up at all. I can add in profession blocks, whatever I want. I don't have to worry about any sorts of issues happening once everything and everybody is locked into place. And that's it. You should now be getting up to about 816 or so iron per hour from this farm. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more great videos like this. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what are you using all of this iron for, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.